Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have The Star. While searching through images, someone stumbled upon an isolated corner of Kazakhstan, and here they found a large pentagram etched into the ground, which of course may have set off some alarm bells. The five point star is surrounded by a circle and is very clearly visible. And of course, once the image began circling the internet, people were coming up with only the most wild theories and explanations. In the end, it turned out to be the exact opposite of something sinister. It's actually the outline of a park that was made into the shape of a star. The star is so clearly marked because of the roadways, and where there's no road, there's a lot of trees, which makes the symbol stand out even more. It's like the best possible outcome for this one, honestly. A beautiful tree lined park in the shape of a star. How lovely. In our number nine spot today, we have the bunker. If you were to take a nice little scroll through the deserts of New Mexico, at some point you'd see something etched into the ground. They appear to be two large diamonds that are surrounded by a pair of overlapping circles. Okay. Likely not a naturally occurring situation, so what could it be? Maybe an ancient geoglyph? Maybe some sort of cool secret Area 51 style place? No, of course it's just allegedly the site of some hidden bunker that belongs to the Church of Scientology. Apparently this cult uses these symbols to guide Scientologists who are returning to Earth after fleeing a planet's Armageddon. Okay. Sure. There are other examples of strange and hidden places that somehow link back to this cult, so it really has me wondering just how many properties and areas that they have and what they're up to. Maybe that explanation really is the truth behind these symbols, but what if it's not? Despite how controversial this cult is, they've managed to grow quite widespread and they've gained some quite well known people over the years, like Tom Cruise and John Travolta. <laughs> So random. In our number eight spot today, we have the cauldron. Google Earth can basically take you anywhere except for the areas they, of course, have blocked off for a variety of reasons. And when I say basically anywhere, sometimes I mean even the most absurd places, including right to the edge of a boiling cauldron of lava. That's right, you can head right to the edge of the volcano that is located on an island in the Vanuatu chain in the South Pacific. It is cool because it's likely the closest I'll ever get to seeing this kind of view in real life. But it's also terrifying to look into that cavern that's filled with bright, hot magma. Like, even just looking at this photo, you can almost feel the heat and the panic of being at the mouth of a volcano. Very cool, but also very scary. In our number seven spot today, we have the Nevada Triangle. This image from Google Maps captures a spooky symbol that is lurking in the deserts of Nevada. I think conspiracy theorists have forever ruined triangles just in general, but this large one with all the circles inside, coupled with the minimal answers on on what it is definitely makes for a bit of an eerie sight. Right now, the most popular theory as to what this could be is a bombing target. Apparently, close by is an Air Force base, so that theory truly would make quite a bit of sense. It could also be some sort of abandoned airstrip, perhaps, but of course, with any mystery on the internet, there are more very wild theories out there. Of course, there's the obligatory it's aliens theory, along with some sort of Illuminati idea, but it wouldn't be the internet without it. In our number six spot today, we have the fire. As the satellites and little cars go by that document the imagery used on Google Maps, they can't exactly predict or control who or what is going to be happening in the area captured. Sometimes it might capture someone who will eventually be blurred out on their front lawn. Sometimes it captures accidents. And in this case, it captured an absolutely raging field fire in Arkansas. It would already be terrifying from the ground, but seeing it from this vantage point really shows how large and powerful it is. Someone on Reddit made a good point saying that it appears as though there are people on the south side, which likely means that the fire is contained and controlled, thankfully, but that doesn't really make it any less cool or interesting to see. In our number five spot today, we have the Valley of Dolls. Google Maps, especially the street view, is such a great way to look around a place and kind of get your bearings before you even get there. I mean, I remember almost eight years ago now, before I moved to Toronto, I spent hours digitally walking around the streets seeing my home, where I was gonna go to school, all that jazz. It was super exciting. But sometimes you walk around a city so unlike your own that it absolutely shocks you. And that is likely what would happen if you were to just stumble upon the town or village of Nagoro in Japan, which is known as the Valley of Dolls. A woman named Ayano Tsukimi grew up in the village and remembers a time when it was full of families and other children just like her. But during her years in secondary school, she and her family moved to Osaka. Ayano continued to grow 
grow up, she married and had her own kids, all the while her parents ended up moving back to the town. After her mother passed away, she also moved back to the village in order to help care for her father, and this is when she realized that the population of the town had dropped drastically since her time here as a child. While living here and trying to keep her garden free of crows, she made a scarecrow that resembled her father, and she placed it outside. When she realized that those living in the village began to mistake the scarecrow for her father, she had an idea to commemorate those in the village who had passed away with a scarecrow and boom, 350 dolls later, the town became an attraction for travelers and journalists. It's a bit eerie to peer through on Google Maps, but when the full story is revealed, it gets way less sinister and actually kind of sweet. In our number four spot today, we have the Costa Concordia. The Costa Concordia was a huge ship with 17 decks, six restaurants, and a three-story theater. The ship was big enough to hold a whopping 4,200 passengers, so there were a lot of people on this boat on January 13th. 2012. On that day, the boat's captain wanted to sail a little closer to the island of Isla del Giglio than he normally would so that he could impress and salute the residents. He turned off the ship's alarm for the computer navigation system, which turned out to be just as terrible of an idea as you would think it is. He thought he knew the waters well enough to navigate by sight, but when the ship struck an underwater rock, things took a deadly turn. The ship capsized and sank, which unfortunately ended up taking the lives of some of the passengers on board. The captain, who is responsible for the accident in the first place, made one more awful mistake when he abandoned ship while passengers were still stuck on board. The recovery for the ship was the largest of its kind as the huge ship had been entirely dismantled. You might be wondering why on earth I just told you an entire shipwreck story, and that is because both the wreck as well as the subsequent rescue efforts were visible on Google Earth for quite some time. The satellite imagery probably isn't even as near as terrifying as it must have been to be close during those terrible terrifying days, but it does give us an idea of the size of this disaster. In our number 3 spot today, we have the crater. Space is very cool, but for every cool and interesting thing I learn about it, I also learn one equally or even more terrifying thing about it as well. It's a very scary place and we truly have no control over the powers of it, which is exactly why this startling image found on Google Earth is an unsettling one. Somewhere in northern Arizona, there is a mark that is like an earth scar and it serves as a reminder of a 50,000 year old meteor strike. When I call it a mark or a scar, I am greatly understating it as this thing is a huge crater known as the Behringer Crater. It's the result of a 150 foot slab of nickel iron that smashed into the earth with the exploding force of two and a half million tons of TNT. Yeah, this sure makes me glad I wasn't around 50,000 years ago. This natural disaster caused this natural landmark that serves as our reminder of just how small we really are. In our number two spot today, we have the scene. This this is an image that went viral with people saying that if you typed in these certain coordinates that you will see what people think is a man dragging a body down a dock and leaving a bloody trail behind. That would be gruesome, wouldn't it? When looking at the image, it does seem compelling and that is pretty much what it looks like, although it's definitely still a little unclear. In fact, it was so compelling that Snopes actually did an article on it. The dock is located in the Netherlands and according to their research into it, Snopes claims that the photo is just a few people walking and they are likely accompanied by a sort of brown dog who may have just jumped into the water and then left some watermarks, thus the reasoning for the red stained wood. That is definitely a less sinister explanation and it's the one I'm hoping is true. In our number one spot today we have the pond. Davy Lee Niles was 72 years old in 2006 when he disappeared. Sadly for almost a decade the case went cold as no one could find him or his car or even figure out what might have happened to him. That was until someone was decorating a Christmas tree in 2015 and was high up on a lift and they spotted something deep within a pond nearby. That something they spotted turned out to be something that had also been visible on Google Maps for years and in the end it was the car that belonged to Davy. and when the authorities went to recover it they were able to find his body inside. The car wasn't visible before because at ground level it's just too mercury. While the satellite image taken from Google Maps makes it quite clear that there is something there, not too many people are taking a virtual tour around this body of water. Thankfully that person in 2015 wasn't only aware of their surroundings, but they said something when they saw something, and it was able to lead to closure for the family of Davy. Starting us off at number 10, Sandy Island. Also known as the Phantom Island, this peculiar location was first discovered by the famous British explorer Captain James Cook in 1774. Now, what's crazy about Sandy Island is that it was documented on maps, 
globes, and even nautical charts for 238 years. But now if you go to Google Maps, you will see no such island. The reason being is that in 1979, it was quite literally undiscovered as apparently no landmass existed there. But even so, it remained on Google Maps until 2012. This seemingly conflicting information made many wonder if there is something that we aren't being told about the strange island. Or non- island I suppose. And so naturally a conspiracy theory began stating that this undiscovered island actually was there and that we are being lied to. Now I'm not about to jump quite to that conclusion, however I will admit that it isn't every day that something becomes undiscovered, so it does make sense to wonder if there is something going on behind the scenes. However, I guess we will never know for sure. Next up at number 9, Blurred House. So I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure if this qualifies as terrifying in the usual sense. However, it is certainly mysterious, and so I couldn't help myself from adding it to today's list. Located in Stockton on Tees, England, there is an inexplicable blurring of a random house that has perplexed neighbors, tourists, and even the residents themselves since 2009. Of course, when things like this happen, people like to make their own conclusions, and so rumors involving crime or aliens began spreading about the property. But in reality, the truth was much more unnerving, that no one could actually explain or figure out why it was banned for public viewing. In fact, according to the current resident, quote, I've been in this house since 2000, but I have no idea why you can't see it. Which would mean at one point you could see it, and then nine years later it was suddenly not suitable for the public to have access to. So is there something spooky about this house that Google doesn't want us to know? Certainly seems that way. Coming in at number 8, Baker Lake. Up in a remote location of Nunavut, Canada, there is a seemingly innocuous place called Baker Lake that for some mysterious reason is not fully visible on Google Maps. In fact, if you do a quick search, there is actually a long black strip that covers a good chunk of the area. And as I'm sure you can imagine, it has garnered a terrifying conspiracy theory to explain why that is. The theory states that this black strip is actually covering extraterrestrial beacons that the government secretly brought down to Earth in 1972. The theory then goes on to explain that these top secret beacons exert powerful electromagnetic fields that disrupt Earth's natural energy grids, which in turn have altered the weather and have been used to focus the Earth's energy in undisclosed Ways. Further, there are some out there who propose that because these alleged beacons are stolen space property, it has caused a massive war with aliens, hence the uprising in alleged UFO sightings. Now, in reality, we have no concrete evidence as to why this is blurred out, but whatever it is, it must be for a good reason. Next up at number 7, Jeanette Island. Located somewhere in the East Siberian Sea, this mysterious tiny island measures just 1.2 miles in length and according to the powers that be, we are not supposed to know about it. First discovered in the late 19th century during the Jeanette expedition, this icy landmass and the ominous Google Maps blob that covers it have been the subject of numerous conspiracies ranging from the usual alien stuff to it being a top secret government base for secret or evil deals amongst world leaders. Now, one thing we do know about this place is that there have been some issues over the years about who the island legally belonged to, with the US and Russia often butting heads over ownership. This has of course lended its hand to the evil political military base narrative, but for all we know, the truth could be even more terrifying. Coming in at number 6, Former Sanzi UFO Houses When construction on these peculiar houses began in 1978, they were marketed to be vacation resorts for US military officers coming from their East Asian postings. But 
as you might have noticed, they have an extremely futuristic look to them, hence why they got the nickname UFO houses. However, the bubbly pod-like architecture wasn't the only strange thing about these houses. A mere two years after construction began, the project was abandoned and never finished due to several car accidents and a number of construction workers who took their own lives on the job. This of course caused a huge loss on the investment and they were forced to end the project. The plan from there was to tear down all the buildings despite a major public pushback and eventually in 2010 all the UFO houses were demolished. But of course, this still didn't answer the mystery on everyone's mind. What was behind all this tragedy and why were they so hell bent on destroying the buildings? Well, there are a few theories. Some believe that the site was the formal burial ground for Dutch soldiers and that the workers had been cursed during construction. While another theory claims that the tragedies were due to the bisecting of the Chinese dragon sculpture located near the resort gates. And of course, the shape of the buildings drew in conspiracy theorists who claim aliens were the reason for death and that they could have threatened the company to tear it down. So considering the buildings no longer exist, they could have very well been something they tried to keep from us. Coming in at number 5, Vaz Island. Way back in the 1920s, the Red Army began searching for a discreet place to build a military complex for inventing, producing, and testing biological weapons. They wanted something small and far away from the Soviet borders so as not to draw attention. And eventually by 1948, such a place was found. Almost immediately, a top secret Soviet lab began testing agents such as smallpox, anthrax, and plague, among others. However, what they didn't see coming was that the island, once split between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, would begin to grow in size once the Aral Sea began drying up in the 1960s. Then fast forward to 1971 and a weaponized smallpox was accidentally released from the lab, infecting 10 people, 3 of whom lost their life. And by the 1990s, the secrecy of the lab got compromised. All island inhabitants were evacuated, leaving the base completely abandoned by 1991. However, in their haste to leave, many of the containers were not properly destroyed or sealed. And so over time, these containers began to leak, contaminating the grounds for decades. Now, the good news is that by 2002, a lot of the sites were decontaminated, but many areas remain contaminated and it's still one of the most feared and deadly places in the world. Coming in at number 4, Underwater Pyramids. Located in the Bahamas, this photo found in Google Maps has left many thinking that they discovered underwater pyramids. Now, I know, this is a full conspiracy theory, but I mean, what else do you expect to find when Google Maps has blurred out seemingly normal places across the globe? The main conspiracy surrounding these alleged underwater pyramids is that they are living proof of the long lost city of Atlantis, or at the very least, proof of some ancient Aztec civilization. But of course, there are others out there who claim these underwater pyramids all have to do with aliens. The mysterious structure is estimated to measure between 3.5 to 11. 11 miles across based on the photos, although no one knows for sure as you can't get to the structure to see for yourself. If it is in fact a pyramid and the size that many believe it to be, it would be the biggest pyramid ever built. But seeing as though no one can visit them, it might be a long while before we know if these pyramids prove any kind of extraterrestrial involvement on Earth. Coming in at number 3, Amchitka Island. Once home to the Aleut people for over 2500 years, Amchitka Island has had no permanent population since 1832. In 1836, when the United States purchased Alaska, they gained control of the territory and it's likely that this purchase had a lot to do with the declining population. However, that's not why it's blurred from the public view. Beginning in the 50s and up until the 70s, Amchitka was used by the US Atomic Energy Commission as a site for underground nuclear detonations. And during these 20 or so years, this island became known as the location of one of the largest underground tests ever conducted in US history. At the time, quite a bit of controversy followed what was going on at the island, mostly due to the fear that the tests could cause several environmental impacts and desolate the land, which frankly, 
they were not wrong about. While not entirely confirmed, it is the general belief that the controversial nuclear past of this island is the reason behind the ominous blur, as it's not somewhere Google is quick to advertise as a place to visit. Coming in at number two, Grom Headquarters. If you have ever Googled Warsaw, Poland, you may or may not have come across a strange group of buildings that look like mysterious blobs compared to the rest of the city around it. Well, as it turns out, this is no accident. Those buildings are Grom Headquarters, which is essentially Poland's special forces building. Now, I'll be honest, there is not much you can find about these headquarters. All I can find out about this top secret group is that they rescued CIA agents from a mission gone wrong in Desert Storm back in 1991. And apparently, whatever else it is they are up to, they do not want you to know about. Which. I mean, I guess is kind of the point. So as much as I'm sure many of us would like to know what goes on in this super secret Polish spy headquarters, I'm afraid that information is highly classified and their exact location will continue to remain a secret from the public. And last up in our number one spot, 2207 Seymour Avenue. Once the home of the beyond evil Ariel Castro, there is no conspiracy that comes with why this house is blurred on Google Maps, only a truly terrifying reality. The horrors in this house began in the mid 90s when Ariel was married to a woman named Grimilda Figuera. Ariel was extremely abusive towards his wife, but despite cracking her skull and causing an eventual terminal brain tumor from his actions, the domestic domestic violence arrest did not result in an indictment. By the late 90s, things began to get even scarier for Grimilda, and so she moved out, took their four offspring, and filed for full custody. But again, no charges were pressed against him. However, his abusive backstory with his wife is not the reason for the infamous reason you can't see this house. It's because shortly after their divorce, between the years of 2002 to 2004, Ariel kidnapped three young women and held them captive in this house until 2013. His victims, Amanda Berry, Michelle Knight, and Gina DeJesus, were starved, beaten, and endured unspeakable psychological and physical acts at this monster's hands, until finally in 2013 when Amanda noticed a door was left unlocked and saw a neighbor walking down the street. Amanda screamed for help and the neighbor ran to the house, broke through the door, allowing Amanda to make a valiant escape with her six year old daughter. She promptly called 911 and authorities arrived in minutes saving the other two victims. The case made international headlines and Ariel Castro was rightfully sentenced to life in prison plus a thousand years without possibility of parole. As part of the plea bargain, the house was actually demolished, but still the story was so evil that it remains blurred on Google Maps forever. Okay, gonna list off at number 10, missing car. Gearing up for the holidays, it should be an exciting time, right? You put up lights, almost fall off a couple of ladders, you're freezing cold. It's good, right? It's family bonding. You want to have a laugh. You don't want to accidentally find a car that's been missing for nine years. That's that's not a laugh at all. That's rather stressful. That's right, back in 2015, a car that had been missing since 2006 was accidentally found while employees at a Michigan mortuary home were decorating around the building for the holidays, which on paper, I'm like, that's fun. They're making the, you know, trying to liven it up a little bit. That's great. But finding this, that's creepy, especially here, ooh. In a nearby pond, they saw what appeared to be the roof of a car, and it turns out if you had just taken a look on Google Maps first, or at any point, you would have found this car a lot sooner, before the holidays. And also not in person, and terrifying. Finding this car also meant solving a nine-year-old missing person case. 72-year-old David Lee Niles most likely drove into the pond by accident. Now I'm gonna look on Google Maps after I'm done this list. Never know what you can find, or solve, apparently. That's great. Looking at my neighbor's backyard, I'm like, is that a, what is that, is that a tire? Is that a coffin? Number nine, the Kazakhstan pentagram. The Nazca lines, they're massive, they're beautiful, right? But they're not a jarring image to look at. A little man carved into the earth, that's amazing. That's kind of cute. A giant pentagram? 
That's, that's haunting, that's not fun. And the fact that there appears to be no life or civilization around said pentagram, well, even worse. This symbol was first discovered in 2013, and it was carved into the ground into a deserted part of Kazakhstan. The closest city to the symbol is 12 miles away, the city of Lysakovsk, so, I mean, that would be quite a commute, whoever did this work of art. The symbol was made because that apparently was the outline of a park at one point in time. It was supposed to be shaped like a star, but if you accidentally went to the wrong place, checked Google Maps to see where to go, zoomed out, and then saw this? Well, I don't know about you, but I would faint at the wheel. I would fall asleep. I would... That's so scary. That's jarring to see on Google Maps. That's very... I don't, I don't like that. Number eight, Scientology Hidden Base. The Church of Scientology's base, like their underground hidden headquarters, their base near Trementia, New Mexico is very alien. It doesn't look out, uh, it doesn't stand out in a good way. I'm sure some of us are watching right now and they're torn, some are on board with Scientology, and some can't stand the sight of Tom Cruise's face. Whatever, whatever your opinion is. On Google Maps, this looks like it should be Area 51. It looks like hieroglyphics, almost. If you saw this on a map in a video game, well, something good has to be nearby or terrible, one or the other. There's also a private airstrip nearby this symbol, so maybe there are aliens here? I don't know. Author John Sweeney says that this is a marker for the hidden bunker for the Church of Scientology. Now these symbols are apparently used by Scientologists as a guide, a guide to remind us where to go after returning to Earth, you know, post-apocalypse, when we all die and then all the Tom Cruises come back and they're like, hey, Mission Impossible 9, 10, 11, doesn't even matter. Number seven. 2012 Sandy Island. Does it exist or does it not exist? Come on, we need an answer. This island is becoming the new Atlantis, apparently. Back in 2012, the world did not end, obviously, but a new island was gifted to us, it seems. A previously undiscovered island just popped up on Google Maps. Now, it was called Sandy Island, and it was located northwest of New Caledonia, and appeared to be the size of Manhattan. Wasn't too big, but again, wasn't too small. We should be able to go and see something. However, when a group of scientists sailed in the area, it wasn't there. Yeah, the island just went away, or it sunk or it moved or doesn't exist. I don't know, it's just not there. How lovely is that? They never found solid ground, only open water. They explained that this might be due to human errors, but do we believe that? I don't know, something's fishy here, pun intended. I don't know, maybe, maybe a giant shark ate this island. Number six, big bunny. It's normal to see bunny hills on Google Maps, but large bunnies on hills? Not what I signed up for. That's, how does that happen? What? That shouldn't be a thing that exists, but it does, so now we have to talk about it. Located on the 5,000 foot high Coleto Fava Mountain, there is somehow a massive 200 foot tall bunny. A knitted, pretty cute bunny. I don't know what's worse, being up close to it and seeing it massive in real, real life? or being far enough away that you see the whole creepy image of the bunny. Both are pretty gross. This rabbit is an art installation knitted by an art collective. So the whole purpose here was for tourists to come and jump around and play on it. Nice, I bet that's fun. I bet bugs love it as well. Number five, Doll Village. Uh, this is like House of Wax kind of stuff. This is, uh, it's one of the coolest places in my opinion. I would love to visit here, but I totally get why a lot of people are freaked out. There is a small village located in Shikaku, Japan, and what makes it creepy are of course the dolls spread out all over the place and the lack of real living human people. All these dolls are made by the same person and here's the kicker. According to reports, once a person passes away, this artist will replace them with a doll. Yeah. That noise you just made, that's why I put this on the list. That's terrifying. I don't like that at all. Another creepy thing here is that you won't see these dolls in the same place, but their creator, she'll deny moving them at all. So the dolls move on their own. That's cool. I lied. Maybe this is the scariest place on earth and I'm not going to visit. Ew, what if the dolls just looked at you? You're just sitting there and it's like... I don't like that. It gave me ch chills, creeps. Number four, large lips. All right, large lips coming up next. After that creepy ghost town, we gotta throw in something different, right? Something nicer? I mean, I don't know. We still need to sleep at some point today. Located in Garb Sedan lies what appear to be a large set of lips. That's all I'll say about that. This is just a natural formation. There wasn't a lip park supposed to be built here. It's just mother nature just doing her thing. Now, if the earth could speak out of this mouth, what do you think she would say? She'd probably say, use your turn signal and also stop littering. Thanks. Number three, creepy figure. I saw this late one night when I was scrolling, like alone in my personal life, and I gasped. I don't know, I don't like this one, one bit. I know it's probably easy to explain, but it's too creepy and, 
Well, to be honest, I'm not sure when I'll get the chance to bring it up again on this channel, so here we go. The streets of Nancy, France. Now on Google Maps, this is a great way to get excited for your trip to Nancy, France. You gotta go check out the roads, plan where you're gonna go. Oh, why is that one spot blurred out? That's weird, let's Google it. Well, before this spot, this random spot was blurred out by Google, this creepy statue was just chilling on Google Street View. Now, I'm not sure who found this first, but man, that must have been jarring. Oh boy. It's so scary that Google even blurred it. You know what I mean? Even Google was like, huh. Why the area is blurred? I mean, people probably wanted to go check it out and that's a no-no. Leave people alone, right? Obviously. That's what Google Maps is for. Just stalk them and scroll out from above. Easy. And number two, Australia Triangle. Not to be confused with the Bermuda Triangle, although that's also a weird one. This Australian Triangle was found, of course, on Google Maps. And I personally, I would check this one out. This is kind of cool. Anything alien, count me in. Put that tinfoil hat on. Let's do it. I'll watch signs on the plane on my way. It was originally discovered back in 2007, and some were quick to argue that this was a UFO that had made a pit stop on Earth. Google Maps got a shot of it. Others found a much more plausible, boring solution. They thought that it's a wind farm with three sets of wires that ultimately form a triangle, and in the middle part, it receives and transmits control signals. So it's not a UFO? Okay, are we sure? All right, we'll come back. Maybe part two. We'll see. And finally, number one, the island of the dolls. Back to doll stuff, gross. Some of these I would check out in person. I mean, sure, this last one here, the island of the dolls, I would only leave for Google Maps. Maybe, I'm not even sure I would zoom in on this place online. Isla de la Monicas, this island for dolls, is famous because of course the dolls are on it, but there's also doll parts that are spread throughout it. Just hundreds of them everywhere. They would be hanging from trees or they would be nailed to the trees. Again, parts or full dolls, doesn't matter. Matter, it's all terrible to me. A resident by the name of Julian Santa Barrera is responsible for all these doll parts, and he did this to try and ward off demonic spirits. It worked. It worked so well that now humans don't even bother with it. He did this right after he found a body in a canal after it went missing, and to this day nobody dares to approach the island. Yeah, more than fair. There's a body? What? They would much rather snap a few pics from their boat, or, like me, just check it out from Google Maps. That's it. All you gotta do is this, just zoom in and out, easy. Starting us off at number 10, we have Jeanette Island. Located somewhere in the East Siberian Sea, this mysterious tiny island measures just 1.2 miles in length, and according to the powers that be, we are not supposed to know about it. From what we can tell, it's mainly covered in ice, so it's highly unlikely that there's any kind of civilization there. So the million dollar question is, what are they hiding? Apparently there have been some issues about who the island legally belongs to, with disputes between the US and Russia over the years, which has led some to believe it could be some kind of top secret military base or something. But whatever it is, it's blurred out on Google Maps and no one is allowed to visit. Next up at number 9, Patio de los Norangos. Located in the gorgeous coastal city of Almeria in Spain, something about this place doesn't add up, and it's being kept a secret from the world. What's strange about this location in particular is that Patio de los Norangos translates to orange tree courtyard, which if that were true, why on earth would we not be able to visit it? So it begs the question, what lies beneath that blurred out square on Google Maps and what could be so dangerous about it that we aren't even allowed to see it virtually, let alone in person. Maybe it's a government building or maybe it's a top secret military base, but whatever it is, they are not keen on anyone knowing what is going on, which to me seems uh, very suspicious. Coming in at number 8, Amchitka Island. Once home to the Aleut people for over 2,500 years, Amchitka Island has had no permanent population since 1832. In 1836, when the United States purchased Alaska, they gained control of the territory and it's likely this purchase had something to do with the declining population. But that's not all. During the 50s, 60s, and 70s, it became the largest underground nuclear testing 
site and was controversial even then in fear that the test could cause severe environmental impacts and desolate the land. Currently it's under observation for radioactive leakage and so it has been blurred out from Google Maps to keep visitors far far away. Coming in at number 7, a Russian warehouse. Deep in an unnamed forest in Russia lies a strange building that no one is permitted to see. Already it sounds like the start of a spy movie. From ground level it's likely all you would see is the double high fencing that surrounds the mysterious warehouses, but from a bird's eye view you you can see it all. But just because we can see it on Google does not mean they want us to know what's in there. I mean generally when you put a giant strange building in the middle of nowhere surrounded by a huge fence, you are trying to keep something a secret. Although no one knows exactly what the strange Ma Long warehouse is, many suspect it to be some kind of military storage facility, possibly even storing explosives. So if that is the case, it would make sense why they put it in the middle of nowhere and why no one is permitted to visit. Coming in at number 6, Underwater Pyramids. Located in the Bahamas, this photo found in Google Maps has left many thinking that they discovered underwater pyramids. Now I know, I know, this is a full conspiracy theory, but I mean I had to add it because it's too entertaining to leave out. Some believe it's proof of Atlantis or aliens themselves, while others have deduced it could have been built by an ancient civilization. The mysterious structure is estimated to measure between 3.5 to 11 miles across based on the photos, although no one knows for sure as you can't get to the structure to see for yourself. If it is in fact what many believe it to be, it would be bigger than any pyramid ever built. But seeing as though no one can visit them, it might be a long while before we know if these pyramids prove any kind of extraterrestrial involvement on Earth. Coming in at number 5, Sandy Island. Also known as the Phantom Island, this peculiar location was first discovered by the famous British explorer Captain James Cook in 1774. Now, what's crazy about Sandy Island is that it was documented on maps, globes, and even nautical charts for 238 years. But now, if you go to Google Maps, you will see no such island. The reason being that in 1979, it was quite literally undiscovered as no landmass existed there, but even so it remained on Google Maps until 2012. This seemingly conflicting information made many wonder if there was something that we weren't being told about this strange island or non-island, and some conspiracy theorists even believe that it is truly there and that we are being lied to. I mean, it isn't every day that something is undiscovered, so it does make sense to wonder if there is something going on behind the scenes, but I guess we will never know for sure. Coming in at number 4, Areno La Hague. Fully pixelated out on Google Maps, this recycling plant has a very strict no visitors policy, which is likely why you are not able to see the entirety of the complex. You might be asking, a recycling plant, what's so bad about that that I'm not allowed to visit? Well, it's not just any old recycling place for beer bottles and juice boxes. The Areno La Hague is a recycling plant for nuclear fuel. So as you can imagine, it is an extremely hazardous place littered with nuclear waste and so for those very obvious reasons, Google Maps keeps it blurred out to keep visitors from trying to figure out how to get there. Coming in at number 3, the Grom Headquarters. If you have ever googled Warsaw in Poland, you may or may not have come across a strange group of buildings that look like mysterious blobs compared to the rest of the city around it. Well, as it turns out, this is no accident. Those buildings are Grom or G-R-O-M, I'm not totally sure, headquarters, which is essentially Poland's special forces building. All I can find out about this top secret group is that they rescued CIA agents from a mission gone wrong in Desert Storm back in 1991. And whatever else they are up to, they do not want you to know about. Which I mean, I guess is kind of the point. So as much as I am sure many of us would like to know what goes on in this super secret Polish spy headquarters, I am afraid that information is highly classified and their exact location will continue to remain a secret from the public. Coming in at number 2, a massive 
pentagram. Somewhere in the outskirts of Kazakhstan lies a dark symbol that has literally been carved into the earth. Although you might not be able to fully see the entire symbol at ground level, from above the stark pentagram is clear as day. Conspiracy theorists have linked the cliffside pentagram to the Freemasons and Wiccans, stating that it is a site of animal sacrifice and satanic ritual, although this has never actually been confirmed. Still, the exact location of the pentagram is difficult to track down, and though not necessarily illegal to visit, I would definitely stay far away from anywhere rumored to be the site of a satanic ritual. And last up in our number one spot today, we have a UFO crash site. Whether you tend to believe in aliens or not, this one is pretty freaking wild. From what you can see on Google Maps, it appears that a flying saucer crashed in the plains of South Africa. Around the UFO is a well-worn dirt path which has led some to believe that aliens themselves could be hiding out there as no one has visited the site since it was discovered and how else would a dirt path have been formed if not by someone or something walking around the area. The top appears to be metallic from the area shot which is unlike any rooftops on other buildings in the area, and many conspiracy theorists are convinced it's a UFO. No one has seen the site to know for sure, or at least no one has returned to tell the tale. At number 10 we have Salem, Massachusetts, USA, a town revered by the cult and has a dark enough history to make any whore fan squeal with glee. Salem, Massachusetts was the home of the 1692 Salem Witch Trials. This is where a massive witch hunt led to the hanging of 19 people who were falsely accused of using witchcraft. There are several spots around the town that give off an extremely creepy vibe and have reported hauntings, but the most notorious place is the former home of Sheriff George Corwin. He was the man responsible for spearheading the hunting and capturing of these witches. Not only that, but the people that were captured he would take them into his basement and then he would torture these people until they confessed to their crimes. Now his ghost and the ghosts of several other people who were tortured by him haunt the Joshua Ward House, which is the building that sits on the land that the sheriff's house used to be on. At number 9 we have the Fairmont Hotel in Banff, Canada. If you have never been to Banff, it is one of the most beautiful places in the whole world. There's amazing skiing in the winter and in the summer it turns into a lush green wonderland. If you were a ghost this would be a paradise to haunt. The Fairmont sits on top of a mountain that looks so regal it could double as the Grand Budapest Hotel. It was built in 1888 and it was the center point to increase tourism in the area and it worked. But like any old building this place has adopted some guests that refuse to check out. There are two ghosts that are responsible for the majority of the ghost sightings. One being that of an old bellhop. He was the employee of the hotel back in the 70s and after he kicked the bucket he decided that retirement wasn't for him. His ghost has been seen throughout the hotel helping people to this day. Very few people get to do what they love. Why let a little thing like death stop you from sticking to your passion? Another ghost is that of the bride dressed all in white. The story goes that she tripped down a staircase on the day of her wedding and met a grim ending. That is a huge bummer. You're about to make it to the altar and you lose your footing. Oh, That sucks. At number 8 we have the Chinoy Church in Beijing, China. An old mysterious building that sits in Beijing, China. There are are several elements to this building that make it an intriguing place for anyone interested in the supernatural. First, no one knows who built the building or who commissioned the building to be built, almost as if an outside force created the building, like the devil came to town and was like, yeah, let's build a church. Also on the front door of the building there is a note that makes it very clear that there are no ghosts inside, which is super sus. Like where I live, there's no note about ghosts because it's just a given. We know there's no ghosts. This place uses the use used car salesman approach to convincing people. Yeah that rickety noise in the back, oh that's just something the car makes, it's an added feature. The residence is haunted by the ghost of a young woman who during the communist war in China. Some say she did this because her husband was killed at war and others say she was trying to avoid capture. At number 7 we have the Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, USA. A Shanghai Tunnel sounds like a place where you go to bet on horse racing and eat the best fried rice you've ever had in your life. But it actually used to be the epicenter for trafficking in the United States. Located in Portland, Oregon, the tunnels are now run down and unused. Back in the 19th century, people walking through these tunnels would often be 
kidnapped and then sold overseas into slave labor. Some bars above these tunnels had trap doors in them which they would use to take drunk people, slip them down to the tunnels where they would never be seen again. A lot of people died in these tunnels before they were sold off into slavery. Now it's said that their angry ghosts walked the halls. Screaming, banging and even weeping can be heard when you pass through these tunnels. At number 6 we have La Chateau de Brizac. France. We are heading all over the world with this list and now we're heading to a place that has a long rich history, France. It makes sense to waltz right into a castle. Besides being one of the most glorious buildings in all of France, an exciting reason to visit this place is the spectral tourist attraction. Back during the reign of King Charles VII, he was married to a beautiful woman who he unfortunately found out was cheating on him. He wasn't too happy with this so he divorced her and that was that. I'm just kidding. It was the 1400s. He also had her killed for insulting his honor. That's how they did things back then. When her life ended she was wearing a green dress. Now it said you can see the ghost of a woman in a green dress walking the halls moaning for her lost love. At number 5 we have Morgan House, Kalimpong, India. The estate formerly owned by the Morgans has a rather dark past. The house was lived in by Baron George Morgan and his wife back in the 1930s. Apparently Mr. Morgan would spend a lot of his free time torturing his wife. With them being in India and his wife having nowhere to go, she eventually fell into a depression. Not long after that she died. The two never had any kids and after Mr. Morgan died, the Indian government took control of the property. It has now been spruced up into a nice hotel, but the terrors of this building's past haven't been washed away. Mrs. Morgan is free from her husband and has no interest in leaving her home. Many patrons of the hotel say they have heard her high heels walking along the wooden floors. At number 4 we have Casa Loma, Toronto, Canada. The most famously haunted place in all of Toronto. It's literally a massive castle that is a 10 minute drive from the world famous CN Tower. It's strange having a massive stone castle built in the early 20th century so close to the downtown core but that's probably why it's so haunted. All the ghosts want to gather there because it feels like home. One of the most haunted areas of the castle are the secret underground tunnels which connect different sections of the property. There have been reports of a ghostly miner who might have died digging the tunnels and a lady in a white dress. Also the castle's former former owner Lady Mary Pellet has been seen all throughout the building. Some people say they've tried to take a picture of her when she's walking through and she will use her ghostly powers to turn off your camera. Sounds like she's not very photogenic. If you want to give yourself an extra fright you should come check out the castle in October when they turn the whole thing into a massive haunted house. I've been it's a great time. At number 3 we have the Hill of Crosses in Lithuania. The look of this place will make you say oh yeah there are for sure some ghosts in here. This hill has been the site of rebellion, respect and remembering the dead for the past 500 years. People have come here to place crosses as a way to pay good fortune to those who died fighting for the freedom of Lithuania. This practice has made it a safe haven for spirits to walk through and there have been reports of seances performed there trying to contact these dead heroes. There are currently over a hundred thousand crosses piled up on this hill. Back in the Soviet reign they tried to destroy this holy landmark three times. Three. That's three. Three times. But the Lithuanian people stood strong and came back to rebuild it every time. That's a pretty awesome story of solidarity. I know why ghosts want to hang out here. They're like I know my home will be safe forever. At number 2 we have cemetery number 1 in New Orleans USA. This place has been nicknamed the haunted city because it is literally filled with so many graves that you could fill a small theater. There are over 700 graves at this site. You pack that many people into one spot and you are guaranteed some strange spirits walking around. On Halloween it must be like a massive party in there. It would be a giant ghost rave with the coolest people from the last 200 years. The grave that gets the most attention is that of former voodoo priestess Marie Laveau. It said she had the power to influence spirits and now even in death her ghost can gain strength from the graveyard and get the phantoms to do her bidding. I mean that's a good skill to have after you're dead. You're like all oh, you guys you work for me. That's how this is gonna work. And for the number one spot we have the Rose Hall in Montego Bay, Jamaica. A beautiful mansion that used to be the home of the Palmers back in the 19th century. The two were a loving couple or that's what the public thought. Mr. Palmer died one day of suspicious causes but foul play was inconclusive. Annie Palmer took control of the property and people weren't too suspicious until her two following husbands and her parents died all without warning. Now things are getting a little suspicious. The urban legend of Annie Palmer is that she was a witch and she would use dark magic to kill her victims. It's said 
said that her evil spirit still inhabits the Rose Hall. A witch ghost sounds pretty serious, especially one that has killed people. That's not something you want to disturb for your own entertainment, right? Well, you totally can. You can take tours of the building which highlight all the legends surrounding the witch of the Rose Hall. And if you really want to bring some bad mojo into your life, you can take part in a seance to communicate with the spirit of Annie Palmer. I think the ghost of a murderous witch isn't something I would want to hang out with. At number 10, we have Mogadishu, Somalia. All right, we're going to kick off this list with a place that has all the key points in a place you do not want to visit. Do they have kidnappings? Oh, you better believe it. Tourists who make the mistake of traveling alone can often get a burlap sack put right over their head and be on a one way ticket to Ransom Town. If you are an American, there is an increased chance of you getting scooped up, so keep an eye out. Actually, it is recommended that you travel with a bodyguard. Okay, so they have that, but do they also have gangs? Yes, sir, they do. Gang violence is a regular thing and civilians are killed all the time. And the cherry on top is there also is a very unstable government with a military constantly walking through the streets. Not to mention the people are suffering. So unless you're traveling with military protection and you have the need to stabilize an unstable country, maybe choose Cancun for your next vacation. At number 9 we have the Siatrum River in Indonesia. In places all over the world resources are so tight that people are forced to exploit their environment. The Siatrum River is a living representation of this. It's located in Indonesia and there is very little infrastructure around there for these people to live a clean and healthy life. So they resort to taking what they can from the land. This river is extremely polluted because the 5 million people who live there have to use it to bathe, water crops, dispose of waste, dispose of garbage and drink. The river has been so polluted that any wildlife that used to call this place home has either left or died. It is terrible to see a place where people are forced to live without clean drinking water. At number 8 we have the Queen's Bath Hawaii. There are beautiful beaches, parties everywhere and enough drunk tourists to make a conga line all the way to the American mainland. But it's the wonderful attractions that can lure people into a false sense of security. On the island of Kauai there is an absolutely breathtaking formation called the Queen's Bath. It is a natural pool formed right into the rock bed of the island. Island. It kind of looks like a place royalty would come to dip their feet in while they drink champagne and laugh about stealing the world's resources. But this place is similar to a Venus flytrap. Gorgeous to look at but when you get too close it can be dangerous. People will often go swimming in the queens bath and then a very strong wave will come through and either bash them against the rocks or wash them out to sea. There are tons of warning signs trying to tell tourists that they should not go swimming in this pool. But every year tourists either drown or need to be rescued. At number 7 we have Syria. Syria has been in constant turmoil for many years. First there was constant civil war. The rebel soldiers battling the government every single day in an attempt to liberate Syria from the oppressive government. This meant that warfare was commonplace in the streets. And then ISIS took over a major chunk of Syria which obviously meant that the violence only escalated. Then the American troops had to come in and try and push out ISIS which meant even more war. It seems like the struggles in Syria will never end. Can everyone there just like call a timeout? Like everyone just stop fighting? Fighting for two minutes and then just be friends and see what happens. I think that is the worst advice I have ever given anyone. Yeah, Che, you can stop war by everyone just being friends. And that's why I'm making top 10 lists and I'm not in politics. At number 6 we have Omayakan, Russia. Here's something about me. I love warm weather. If it's 40 plus Celsius and I'm sweating at home just from putting on my pants, I've never been happier. So this place would be hell on earth for me. Omayakan is the coldest inhabited place in the world. 500 people live there year round for some unknown reason. They must like it when it gets so cold that your eyeballs freeze inside your head, which is a real thing that can happen. The temperature can drop to negative 62 degrees Celsius. That's minus 80 Fahrenheit. It would be so cold I would want to cry out but my tear tucks would be frozen so all I would be able to do is scream and pray for death. One of the weirdest things about this place is it's actually a tourist attraction. People will choose to go to the coldest village on the earth rather than eating pizza in Italy. If you're that kind of person, don't talk to me. I don't need your weird vibes getting on me. I'm vibing all the time. I don't want your bad cold vibes in my life, okay? One of the main tourist attractions at this place is a giant thermometer that will remind you how much fun you're having by showing you the lip slicing temperatures. And one time it got so cold in this village that the thermometer broke. What? 
the hell. And number five, we have Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This one is a toss up. Like, I would probably go to Rio. Rio's an amazing city. It's filled with some of the most gorgeous people you've ever seen in your life. They have the amazing Carnival Festival where you can party for like days and probably fall in and out of love 10 times. Brazilian food is amazing. You can go to a Brazilian steakhouse and eat enough meat that you'll get meat sweats that soak right through your shoes. But Rio definitely has a darker side. Rio is one of the most dangerous cities on the planet. There is a ton of gang violence with Rio being a major hotspot for drug trafficking and gun trade. You also have a good chance of getting kidnapped or murdered. So when you're picking your next vacation spot, you gotta decide how bad you want to see people dance on a float during carnival. At number 4 we have Lake Nyos, Cameroon. Back in August of 1986, a giant cloud of carbon dioxide erupted out of the bottom of Lake Nyos. This invisible cloud of death spread fast at 50 kilometers an hour and ended up killing 1700 people. This is the kind of thing where legends of God Gods and monsters come from. If this happened when an ancient civilization was living there, they wouldn't have known that this was caused by a giant carbon cloud from a nearby volcano. They would have thought it was some sort of demonic forest and they needed to sacrifice things. They would have been afraid of this lake until the end of time. But thankfully, we have computers to tell us what happened. A seismic shift caused gas from a volcano to come through Lake Nyos. This is normal, but the gas usually is released slowly, not in these massive amounts like this. Since this happened, scientists have developed a way to extract gas from the base of the lake preventing it from happening again, but even though they're taking safety measures, you won't catch me anywhere near this place. At number 3 we have the Ganges River, India. The Ganges River in India is one of the most polluted rivers on the planet. If you thought the river Siachrum was bad, it has nothing on the Ganges. This river is used for sewage, personal waste and the waste of major companies. And get this, over 500 million people use this river regularly. Some people come visit it every day because they believe it has holy powers that can heal you, which is absolutely absolutely not true. The river is actually packed with harmful chemicals that cause cancer. From all the constant traffic of people visiting the river, it's only getting more polluted. There is trash that is left there every day from all the people that make the trip. And there isn't even a proper cleaning system, so the problem is only getting worse. At number 2 we have the Skeleton Coast, Namibia. This place has all the pieces of an environment that is trying to kill you. I mean it's called the Skeleton Coast for God's sake. They didn't call it sexy fun margarita beach. No they didn't. First off we have very harsh waters. The tides and waves are so unpredictable that you can see the shells of all the shipwrecks along the coast. Everything from major tankers to little tugboats can be seen broken down along this beach. If you are one of the people who are unlucky enough to get shipwrecked here and survive by swimming to the mainland, you would now be in one of the worst deserts on the planet. It is extremely dry with almost zero water sources and spans hundreds of kilometers. There's also this eerie fog effect that comes off the ocean and covers the desert, meaning you could be lost in a brutal landscape without being able to see 10 feet in front of you because the fog is so thick. That sounds like a pleasant way to die. At number 1 we have Caracas, Venezuela. Ok for the number 1 spot we have one of the most hostile cities on the planet so strap in. The entire country of Venezuela has been at war with its own government for years now. Protesters are shot and killed in the streets on a regular basis and all this chaos has seemed to be boiled down to Caracas. People desperately want their freedom from the oppressive government and on top of that there is an insane amount of organized crime. You have drug lords moving products to the city constantly and hijackings are a regular occurrence. And it's suggested that you never wear anything expensive when you are walking through the street because people will rob it right off your body. So leave your Gucci sneakers at home unless you want to be walking around barefoot. To give you a little perspective, if you google countries with the most murders right now, Caracas will be number 3. Starting off this countdown we have Amchitka Island. Located in Alaska, sections of this island are blurred out on google maps and no one really knows why this is. But it may have to do with the nuclear testing that once took place there. From the 1950s to the 1970s, Amchitka Island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. Nowadays they are running tests to see if the island has any radioactive leakage there. If there isn't, then in 2025 it could become a wildlife reserve. But again, why is half of the island blurred out? Maybe that's the section where the nuclear testing took place. But why is it still blurred? 
A lot of people think that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activities there and that's why. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. In our ninth spot, we have 2207 Seymour Avenue. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. 2207 Seymour Avenue, located in Cleveland, Ohio, is a home where a horrific crime took place. From 2002 to 2004, Ariel Castro kidnapped three young women. Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina De Jesus. He kept them captive in his home until 2013 when Amanda Berry escaped with her daughter and contacted the police. The police came to his house and rescued the other women. Castro was arrested within hours. He was sentenced to life plus 1,000 years in prison without parole. Due to the disturbing crimes that took place at his home, Google Maps decided to blur his house. In fact, the house has been named the House of Horrors. But a couple years back, his house was demolished to help the victims move on from their traumatizing past. Coming in at number eight, we have the French nuclear facility. The Arriva La Hague nuclear fuel reprocessing facility in France is another place that is blurred out on Google Maps. This facility opened in 1976 and is responsible for treating nuclear fuel from several countries. Here's the thing though, this facility hasn't always been blurred out. By using the Google Earth history tab, you can see old Google Earth images of this facility. So now, why all of a sudden is it blurred out? What is going on there? Well, it may have something to do with the controversy it has received and the backlash it received from Greenpeace. Since 1997, Greenpeace has been trying to shut it down, saying that they dump 1 million liters of liquid radioactive waste per day in the ocean. That is severely messed up if that's true. Maybe that's why it's blurred out, so that people don't see what they're really up to with their nuclear waste. Moving on to number seven, we have the French prison. There are a number of prisons that are blurred out on Google Earth, including the Beaumet prison in Marseille. Now, why do they blur out images of prisons? Well, a couple of reasons. One, for privacy. But the main reason is so that the criminals don't know the layout of the prison. Basically, this prison wasn't always blurred. Following a successful jailbreak, France's Minister of Justice was like, why are there aerial images of this prison available online? And then that led to the prison getting blurred. But of course, you can still find older images of the prison on Google Maps that show what it looks like and its layout. In our sixth spot, we have the Antarctic Ice Shield. This is another pretty strange place to get blurred. But basically, halfway between Australia and Madagascar, there is a 22 kilometer long blur in the middle of the Antarctic ice shield. I mean, this place is one of the most isolated places on Earth. There's nothing but ice and penguins there. So why is it being blurred out? We don't know for sure, but people think that there is something hidden there that we're not allowed to see. Although it's thought to be owned by Australia, theory goes that Russia or the US have built a research facility there. The only way we'll know for sure is by visiting the place itself. So who's coming with me for this field trip? It'll be a lot of fun. Come on, just pack a snowsuit and lots of hot packs. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Moroa Island. Located in French Polynesia, this island was first used for nuclear testing in 1966 by France. These tests apparently took place until 1996. That's when the French president shut down the facility. Why? Well, Greenpeace found out that these tests were polluting the water as far as Peru and New Zealand. In fact, many locals in Tahiti have claimed they have been affected by the radiation from the tests. Nowadays, the island is off limit to visitors and is guarded by French forces, which is probably why half the island is blurred on Google Maps. Or maybe it's because they're still doing these nuclear tests. We may never know. Moving on to number four, we have Almira Correctional Facility. Almira Correctional Facility, also known as The Hills, is a maximum security state prison in New York. This is another facility blurred on Google Earth. Why? Well, a number of reasons. One, they have fears of an aerial attack. Number two, they have fears that someone will use this information to plan an escape. And number three, the prison is highly secure. Why would they want images of the building online for everyone to see? But it turns out that this location got blurred after a number of riots and mass escapes. Moving on to number three, we have North Korea. Okay, is it even shocking that North Korea has sections of its country blurred? I mean, they are so secretive, so this isn't a surprise at all. Now, the area that is blurred is along the country's western shore. 
So people have thought that they are hiding something there, maybe a secret military project. Who knows? I mean, hey, the country is hiding so many things. Like I said, this one doesn't really come as a surprise. In our second spot, we have Pateo de los Naranjos. Located in Spain, this place translates to orange tree yard, and it is completely censored on Google Maps. No matter how close you try to zoom in on the map or the area close by, you won't be able to see anything. Why? Well, there's a lot of government buildings located there, so it's blurred out for security and privacy reasons. Which makes sense, many government or military buildings are blurred out on Google Maps for similar reasons. And in our number one spot today, we have Jeanette Island. Located in Russia, this island is said to contain a secret Russian military base. If you type this island into Google, you'll find a whole lot of nothing. Legit, it just looks like a bunch of water. It's not even registered on Google Maps as an island. When you type in its coordinates, you will see a message that says this island is unavailable. Now, before it was removed from the maps altogether, it wasn't even blurred out. It was actually blacked out. Like there was a full on black mash just covering it. But when you zoomed in, you could see this icy mass, and that's all. According to Reddit user Exoplanetary Science, he said, and I quote, Google rarely blacks out without reason. A search through Google Earth shows that this has been permanently blurred out, even in images dating back to the 1980s. I'm going to guess there's a concealed Russian military base located there, and possibly quite a substantial one. So there you have it folks, secret Russian military base. Mm -hmm.